Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Booz. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And for Timescale Tuesday this week, I'd like to finish uh, really what's been an impromptu three-part series about continuous aggregates. Now, I wanted to do these last couple weeks focusing on continuous aggregates because uh, really it culminated because of uh, questions I see often from our users about refresh policies. I see settings both in Timescale DB 1.7 and in Timescale DB 2 and above uh, I see that users are, are trying to refresh periods of time within their aggregates, and it's probably not doing what they think, uh, really because of maybe a lack of, of just full understanding of how continuous aggregates work under the cover. So that's what we've been talking about. So last week, um, I showed you this video. Uh, this was a video I, I, I recorded last week, really showing you what is actually stored inside of continuous aggregates. So I'll link to that below, but please go check that out. If you didn't see that one last week, to give you a little bit better idea of what we're gonna talk about this week. So, last week we looked at this chart as something we show often as a graphical representation of continuous aggregates. We have um, a query that we write, and a normal time bucket function takes the raw data that's kind of shown in gray, and it buckets it into these, in this case, a one hour bucket. And we saw that the time that you get back with your query is the time of the beginning of the bucket. So in this case, it's one hour, therefore the five o'clock bucket is all of your data from five until really 5.59, 59, 59, 59 uh, to the very edge of six uh, bucketed in, in whatever you happen to have your aggregate as. Maybe it's an average or a count, something like that. Now through the rest of this video and sometimes in documentation, you'll also hear us talk about a bucket width. And so it really just means whatever interval you have inside of the time bucket function. So whether I say a bucket of one hour or a bucket width of an hour, this is really what we're talking about and it helps guide the discussion here. The thing we saw last week is that even if I am in the middle of an hour, so let's say it's currently one in the 1.30 in the afternoon, I have some new data represented by these green dots. If I run this query on a hyper table directly, I will get back a 1300 hour with some kind of aggregation. There is some data there. What we saw last week, however, is that continuous aggregates, if uh, the real time nature of the aggregate will show you that 1300 bucket, but that data has not yet been materialized into the uh, aggregate itself. So it's not actually been stored because continuous aggregates only materialize into the database a bucket width of time that has fully completed uh, and that you're asking us to fully refresh. So bucket width, uh, think of it, or, or I'm sorry, the refresh period, the window that we're talking about, in this case is gonna be represented by this blue uh, kind of square. When you set up a policy, and honestly, when you actually just run a refresh manually on a continuous aggregate, you give us a start offset and an end offset. What you're telling us is what window of time within your raw data you want us to go look at. Now remember, that window of time needs to encompass full buckets of time for the continuous aggregate to actually then materialize that data. So in this representation, we have, uh, it looks like about six full buckets that we have kind of encapsulated. And if I were to actually run this refresh, you see the last two arrows don't actually have any data yet. And so uh, if I were to run this refresh, I'm now past that time and I would actually get two new buckets of data. Well, that's great. The problem is if you're not fully through that hour, uh, we saw that this query, this uh, time bucket with the width of one hour, if I'm in the seven o'clock hour and I keep trying to refresh that seven o'clock hour for some reason, I'm not gonna get any data. In fact, even if I just say refresh the last hour, I'm in the middle of the seven o'clock hour. Let's say it's 7.30. That means that if I were to ask it to refresh the last hour, I'm only getting the middle of two different hours. So actually nothing's going to be materialized because I am not representing here a full bucket width. That's where the confusion I think comes in. Now, this is uh, maybe a little bit, hopefully easier to understand. If you have a bucket width of one hour and you set a uh, start offset of 10 minutes and an end offset of one minute with a schedule interval of one minute, I've seen instances like this quite often among our user community asking questions. What people think is happening, what users believe is happening, is we are somehow just keeping the last 10 minutes of data refreshed as new data comes into the hyper table. 
So uh, there's this hope or this assumption that uh, the most recent hours just always being kept up to date with the most recent 10 minutes. Instead, what's happening is you're setting that blue window to just a very small 10 minute slice. And that 10 minute slice moves every minute and it never encapsulates an entire full hour of data. Therefore, nothing actually gets materialized into your continuous aggregate. That means you are then querying more and more raw data with your real-time aggregate. So this will not work. Likewise, this seems to make a lot of sense and it's something I see often. I set the start offset to one hour and I set the refresh interval to one minute and the end offset to one minute. So surely I have an entire hour of data here and it's gonna run every minute. Therefore, I'm going to refresh that bucket on the hour at the top of the minute. The problem is that when you create this refresh policy, you probably don't uh, actually hit the enter key and it doesn't get created in the database exactly on the hour exactly. And so even if this policy runs one second after the hour, the offset of one hour is an interval. That means it's going to go back to one second after the beginning of the previous hour. Therefore, the data you're aggregating is still not a complete full bucket width of time that goes from, uh, let's say, you know, again, we were using the seven o'clock hour. In this case, it would go from 6.01 until 7.01 that crosses two buckets. It's not one full bucket. So this also will not work. Instead, our recommendation, and I'm gonna show you at the end of this, uh, something we've changed, is you really should always uh, have an offset of what we would say is two bucket widths. So if you have a one hour time bucket, we highly recommend that you use a two hour start offset. And then your end offset needs to be at least um, you know, give us two full bucket widths so that no matter how often or where that bucket, that window slides, you're going to aggregate at least one full bucket of time. Okay, so now let's look at a similar example with another interval that's fairly common among our users. So a one day bucket or a 24 hour bucket is, is also something we see a lot of. Now in this case, again, if I'm in the middle of February 23rd, and I were to run this query on the raw hyper table, I would get data back for each bucket of time each day, right? So I'd see 00 on February 21 and 00 on February 22 as the beginning time for each of those days. But the materialized view, if I'm in the middle of the 23rd here, I'm not gonna get any data actually materialized. All of the data from the continuous aggregate for this one day query is going to be appended as a real time query on the end. So something's, uh, we're not actually materializing that to the database. Now I see this uh, very similarly to the other examples. So for 24 hours, I'll often see users set up a policy like this. Start offset of one hour, maybe schedule it to run every 10 minutes. And the thought is, or the hope is that they're materializing the last hour of that full day bucket. So they're reducing the amount of work they're doing over time. That's the hope. In reality, what's happening is you're never getting a full bucket width. Therefore, nothing's ever being materialized to the database. And your queries against this continuous aggregate are probably going to get slower and slower because what you're actually doing is querying the real-time hyper table uh, because nothing's been materialized to the database. So this won't work. And neither will something like this for the exact same reason as we saw with the one hour. Because the schedule interval probably does not happen exactly on the minute of the top of the hour, this 24 hour bucket or this uh, width of time, this refresh window is never gonna fully encapsulate an entire day, zero, zero to 59, 59, 59 at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day. And so um, this again will not actually materialize a day's worth of data ever. It will just keep running, uh, but nothing gets saved to the database. So this won't work. Instead, much like the previous example, something like this might be a better uh, refresh policy. Again, you'd have to tweak this for your specific use case. And that would be refresh policy of two bucket width. So we'd say start offset of 48 hours and end offset of one hour. Maybe you can make that three or four hours. It's totally up to you. Uh, our recommendation is that the end offset is far enough back that you're not trying to materialize the data that's getting written to right now that ha might have a lot of write contention, 
just to make sure things are as fast as possible. But this might be very uh, reasonable for your specific use case. So this would be a better example of a refresh policy for something like a 24-hour bucket. All right, so I've connected to the database that I used last week. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video, please go do that. It, it just really reviews what this data is, how I created it. But here's a quick overview. I created a, a fake table. I inserted data up to two hours ago. All right, so I left a couple buckets of time empty. I then uh, created a continuous aggregate, so it materialized everything up to two hours ago. And then I set a refresh policy in motion that I'm going to show you here in a second. And then I added more data to the hyper table up to just a couple of minutes ago. So uh, in general, if the policy was set up correctly, I would then expect that the continuous aggregate would have been materialized at least up into the hour before I'm currently in. Again, we, we recognize I'm never going to get a continuous aggregate of the current bucket of time if I'm in the middle of it. Since my bucket is one hour, I'm in the middle of the hour. I'm never going to materialize this current hour into the database. So I would expect at least the previous hour to show up. So we are in the 2100 uh, 2100 hour of the day. It's, it's low after nine o'clock in the evening. I've turned off real-time aggregates. So the data that you're going to see when I query the continuous aggregate itself is only what's been saved into that continuous aggregate. So this has already been run. You'll see that the uh, most recent point in time of the hyper table is just a couple of minutes ago. So again, it's a little, it's about 9.15 my time. So just uh, 9.12, 21.12 was the last data point in the hyper table. So if I run the raw one hour query against the hyper table, I would expect, and I do get, a 2100 hour. All right. Now, um, and I have this policy running. It's been running for a number of minutes. And so every minute this runs, and I was saying, hey, update the last five minutes of time. Now, if this had been running for the full hour, I, I think most people would expect, and this is what I've seen, and this is honestly an extreme case. People usually are around the hour time, but they're, they're just trying to get the last you know, few minutes of data materialized. The thought would be that I'm getting the last four or five minutes of data kind of re-aggregated into this hour. That's not what's happening. I'm only getting, in this case, a four-minute slice of time that's never going to encapsulate one hour, let alone an exact boundary of a bucket. In this case, the beginning of the day to the very end of the day. And so when I query, even though this has been running, if I query the real-time aggregate, you'll see that I still only have data from two hours ago. So the policy's been running, I inserted new data, but it's not updating the data with what's, it's not updating the continuous aggregate with what's new. So just to verify that it really is running, I can query the job stats table. So the current time and the job stats time. So we can see that it is currently 916 and it ran just literally a couple of seconds ago at 916, 35 seconds. So the data is happening, the job is running that is, but the data is not being updated. So how do you get yourself out of this? Well, there are really two ways. One is you can alter the configuration of the job that's currently running. So maybe you set your continuous aggregate to show only materialized data, and you realize that it's not set up correctly. It's not actually materializing the data like you thought. So what you can do is look at the jobs information view, and near the end, you'll see that your uh, JSONB configuration uh, document is right there. So you can copy this out uh, into the alter job API, the, this function. All right, so I know that it is job 1002. I, I did this right before I started recording. Now I will say that you need to be very careful if you do this, because if you get some of these settings wrong, you can actually put the database in a bad state because the configuration of the job is incorrect and it's trying to materialize maybe a table that's wrong. I've actually done this once or twice as I prepare for the demo. And it really, I would recommend you copy it out of, uh, you know, query the, the job table, copy this uh, JSONB document into here, and then edit it appropriately. So in this case, I would edit it to now show a start offset of two, hour, two hours ago and an end offset of 10 minutes ago. Now, where that end offset should be really depends on your data and your expectation. But with these settings, I, I'm guaranteed I'm always going to have at least one full bucket width of data that can be materialized. 
Now, if you're at all concerned about editing this JSONB document, the other option for you is to delete the job. So you can use the delete job API and then just create a new policy with the format that you're probably used to, specifying the start offset, end offset as intervals. Whichever way you want to do it's fine. I'm going to do the altered job because I've checked my settings. I've made sure that I copied this out so I have the right hyper table ID and so forth. And then whenever I run this, whether I add a new policy or I alter the job, uh, we will actually run that policy immediately at that point again. So my expectation is I'm going to alter this job. It will actually refresh using the new start and end offset. And I'm going to expect that I should see a bucket for the 19th and the 20th hour. You'll remember that previously we only had materialized up through the 18th hour. Let's see what happens. So I alter that job. It just shows me that the job was altered and here are the new settings for that job. And now I'm going to go down and query the hyper table again. And sure enough, I, I get up through the 19th hour. So uh, in this case, I, it just depends on the data that I had. And because uh, the data ended probably right at the, the interval of what I was hoping for, or that 10 minutes maybe put me over the mark, um, I didn't quite get the full bucket of uh, time done yet. Now, over the next couple of minutes, it's going to refresh with that two hour mark and I should end up with uh, that 20th hour finally filled in as it encapsulates that time. So uh, that is what you need to be aware of as you do your refresh policies. Please uh, think about that. Now, I do wanna show you something that we've done. Realizing that this has been a problem with some people uh, in their setups and just the misunderstanding, we did actually change this in Timescale DB 1.0.2. And so in this uh, example, what I've done is I have that same refresh policy. So in this case, I've set up the exact same tables. I've done the exact same thing. But now if I try and set up a policy with less than two bucket widths of a start offset, we actually give you a new error. And that error says, uh, let me go ahead and copy it out. It makes it a little bit easier to read. It actually says, you know, your policy refresh window is too small. And so we give you the, the exact detail that I've been showing you in this video, uh, at least two bucket widths, and it shows you what that bucket width should be as a minimum. So we've tried to uh, help you starting with timescale DB 2.0.2, and everything newer than that will have this precaution, this kind of safety setting in there. But if you have a version before that and you have a policy that's not working, please go ahead and set it so that you're actually getting the data that you expect. So let's just review one or two quick things, and then we'll be done with the video. So again, just as I did with the demo from last week, uh, I want to remind you coming out of that one last time, continuous aggregates will only materialize complete buckets of data. And by data, what I mean is time. So it has to be at least one entire bucket width and you have the, the clock time, as it were, has to be beyond the end of the bucket, right? So if it's a one hour bucket, we're not going to materialize that aggregation if there is data within that bucket until we are beyond the hour. And that kind of blue window we talked about at the beginning of this, that refresh window encapsulates an entire bucket of time, not just an entire hour. It literally has to be a bucket beginning to end wherever that would fall. So uh, a couple best practices to remind you of. One is, uh, I'll just say it again, you know, use at least two bucket widths of time and again, starting with uh, timescale DB 2.0.2, as I showed you in the demo, will now prevent you from trying to create policies less than that, because there's a really good chance you're not actually materializing data and it's not a good policy to begin with. It doesn't do anything for you. The other thing I'll say is uh, use smaller buckets. I, the reason people are often doing this is because they have maybe a one hour bucket, but they think, or, or maybe in practice, they really have so much data coming in that they think it's gonna to be too slow to aggregate an hour's worth of data. A better practice there might be for your use case to maybe have a time bucket of 10 minutes. And then in your queries against the uh, continuous aggregate, go ahead and do your time bucket there. So you can actually time bucket a continuous aggregate. So let's say you wanted one hour, you could say time bucket to one hour on the continuous aggregate. Uh, that way you could refresh the data more regularly uh, within the continuous aggregate. That also helps with data retention, as I, as I said down here. 
Now, what that means is you could drop data. This is another reason people do this, is they, they have so much data coming in or they have some kind of uh, internal policy that says, we have to drop data at the end of 24 hours. Well, if the time bucket is 24 hours, we're not gonna materialize that data until at least 24 hours later, and you have to have the right policy set up. And so maybe you should do time buckets on an hour. And then uh, at the you know 24 hour mark or the 25 hour mark, you could uh, drop some data from the hyper table, but your continuous aggregate would still have those one hour time buckets. Uh, and then if you need a 24 hour bucket uh, for your final query, you can do that time bucket of one day on your continuous aggregate instead. There's a lot of flexibility. I just uh, really wanted to get through these couple of videos about continuous aggregates, uh, specifically to get to this point about refresh policies so that you really are using them in the most effective way because we want you to be successful. All right, so uh, I've ended the last number of videos with this, docs.timescale.com. Please come check it out. Uh, we love seeing when people find value in them and it answers their questions. Uh, and then finally, slack.timescale.com. Come join the conversation. Uh, we, we're in there as often as we can be. We love to try and help our community. And we learn a lot. It's also where you'll get a lot of the first announcements of things that are happening uh, and really keep you up to date. Please come join us. Thanks so much for watching these videos. And hopefully, it has really helped you understand continuous aggregates with inside of TimescaleDB 2.0.